as you already know that the great Roman Empire had a vast extent and Christianity spread along its geographical extent, right? So the growth and the fall of Roman Empire were along the lines of the rise of this world religion that was Christianity. Now, as you already know that the Roman Empire had a vast extent and the vast extent of this Roman Empire was not only in terms of its political stature but also in terms of its cultural position and its economic position as well, right? And that facilitated the growth of Christianity as we have been learning in the previous chapters, right? So the Roman Empire at that point of time um, you know, included uh, today's Spain, France, Turkey, Italy, and many more, um, you know, places in the modern day world map, right? So the, the extent of the Roman Empire was quite huge enough, right? Now, during that point of time, which was the first to the third century, Roman Empire was at its largest, you know, extent and it was at its peak in 117 AD. Now, from that point of time, we move into the 5th CE, which begins or takes us to the journey of the decline of Roman Empire, right? So, as you know that Rome was not built in one day, right? You have heard this phrase. Exactly like that, Rome did not fall in one day as well, right? It was this huge empire and from that we can trace different reasons what led to the fall of Rome as has been stated by the historians. If we take a look at the first reason, the first reason, which was the division of the Roman Empire in 285 AD. Now, at that point of time, which is 285 AD, Emperor, Roman Emperor Diocletian was the one who was ruling over this entire extent. So, the entire or entirety of Roman Empire, right? Now, because the Roman Empire was so large, it was administratively impossible to keep ruling on such you know, a large geographical landmass, right? So, what he did was he divided the empire. Now, you can see the line of division right here. And what Diocletian did, uh, he asked his um, friend Maximian to take over the rule of the Western Roman Empire, right? So, the Western Roman Empire is here and this becomes the Eastern Roman Empire. So, this is ruled by Emperor Diocletian. This is ruled by his co-ruler, Maximian. Now, they were called co-rulers because they kept Rome as their capital. So, Rome wasn't shifted anywhere, just that this, uh, you know, the empire was split in two. But what happened was, after the split uh, took place after the division took place it took a toll on the people you know the people the city's administration and all of that because as you know uh, if we are under you know one territory then the pattern of rule uh, is similar but once it became divided the people also became divided so from there um, you know civil wars arose and that took a toll on the people and the empire okay so the second reason becomes the split of the empire. We have already studied about the split by the Roman Emperor Constantine, right? You remember? So what did Roman Emperor Constantine do around 330 AD? He shifted his capital from Rome to Constantinople, which is current day Istanbul, okay? Now Constantinople meant the city of Constantine and what essentially he did was he moved his capital from Rome to Constantinople which is here okay now the eastern and the western Roman empires were divided as in their imperial unity was already broken by 
uh, Emperor Constantine. So the unity of these uh, two empires were of course broken and then the Western Roman Empire and the Eastern Roman Empire uh, you know faced constant clashes with each other because of the political disputes. Now of course the Western Roman Empire's trade routes were also linked with the Eastern Roman Empire, right? So the trade routes would come from here and then from here they would go to the entire region, right? Again, there were inland trade routes and also we have to remember because this entire area was covered with water, I mean, it was surrounded by water. Um, the main trading routes were joined only by the waters. So this is where the trade routes begin for the Western Roman Empire as well. Okay. So in case of the political clashes, the Western Roman Empire could not, you know, get hold of any more trade routes from this side. And that is why it kept, you know, moving into a constant decline. So in 395 AD, therefore, we see that there are two separate separate parts, that is the Western and the Eastern Roman Empire, that breaks the imperial unity of the existing Rome, right? Now, for the Eastern Roman Empire, Constantinople was its capital, and for Western Roman Empire, Rome was its capital. Eastern Roman Empire was also called Byzantine, right? Now, once the capitals got divided and it also got, you know, separated, the land got divided and the capitals got separated, Western Roman Empire got Rome and Eastern Roman Empire got Constantinople. Of course, you know, these two capitals also came into a clash because there was no more unity left. It was not one empire anymore. So these, you know, political disputes were also one of the reasons why Western Roman Empire kept declining. Now from these political disputes arrived the very fact that they could not access, I mean, the Western Roman Empire could not access the trade routes because the trade routes would go through the Eastern Roman Empire and then to the Western Roman Empire. So the Western Roman Empire kept declining economically as well, whereas the Eastern Roman Empire kept thriving. So we see that the Byzantine Empire not only is thriving economically, but, but also culturally as well as politically. Now the third reason is the arrival of the barbarians. But who were these barbarians? Now for the Romans, anybody other than the Roman people, okay, any other tribe were called the barbarians. And why so? Now the barbarians were the tribal people who had, you know, different cultures, they had different eating patterns, they had different hunting methods and they also used certain primitive tools for hunting as well as their, in, in, in place of their warring techniques, right? Now the Romans who had, you know, moved ahead and they were very technologically advanced, they thought that these barbarians were uncivilized. They treated them as uncivilized or aliens. Why aliens? Because these Roman people did not understand the language that these barbarians spoke, right? And whatever, you know, whatever communication they tried to have with them, it constantly felt like they were talking gibberish. So from that came from bar, 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 which was the gibberish tone that only went into the ears of the Romans. From there came the name barbarians. Now once the barbarians or the tribal people came, uh, you know, knocking at the door of the Roman Empire, that is when Roman Empire went into a fast decline. Alaric the Visigoth, who was one of the barbarians, 
you know had his first invasion in 410 CE now when Alaric the Visigoth who was the first emperor who entered Roman Empire Romulus Augustus was the Western Roman Emperor now interesting fact is that that Romulus Augustus had only ruled for one year when you know the barbarian Alaric Visigoth entered and in the war between them Romulus Augustus you know was defeated and Alaric took the throne if we look at the map here we can see that you know these are the areas or these are essentially the routes through which the invasions happened the invasions of the barbarians happened over the Roman Empire we have Eastern Western Roman Empire here we have Eastern Roman Empire here Constantinople here now of course Rome or Italy would be their first place that they would want to strike because that was um, the capital now the Huns were the first ones to enter right from Carthage and then to Rome then we have the Saxons the Vandals then we also have the Ostrogoths and the Goths and also the Visigoths so let's look at the areas that they took over Goths or Visigoths took Rome Vandals took over and sacked Rome so they entered Rome Huns were the ones who attacked some parts of Eastern Roman Empire so Constantinople and Byzantine Empire those portions Franks were the ones who took over present-day France and Saxons were the one who took over the Great Britain areas in the Roman Empire now was it only the barbarians or the economic decline or the political reasons right that can't be it because there were emperors who were ruling these places the Roman Empire was ruled by many emperors but that also became a reason of decline because the weak emperors could not you know hold on to their kingdoms and once the Germanic tribes came in they fell weak now here we can see that 41 different people you know tried to become the emperors or they claimed that they were the emperors and they were so unstable and so weak without a complete army that they fell into the hands of the Germanic tribes this takes us to the great debate of the fall of Roman Empire now there is an interesting fact when the historians try to locate the decline of Roman Empire they often say that Roman Empire did not fall in 4th century CE right the reason lies in the very fact that the Roman Empire was primarily split between Western and Eastern right and the Western Roman Empire kept declining whereas the Eastern Roman Empire thrived which was the Byzantine Empire now once that happened Western Roman Empire became so weak that it could not stop the barbarians from coming in whereas the Eastern Roman Empire had that capacity and barbarians could not em you know enter their area so the Eastern Roman Empire kept thriving till the 14th century and that is why the historians state or they believe that in the 4th century Rome exactly hadn't declined because when Western Roman Empire went away the Eastern Roman Empire was still existing so Eastern Roman Empire is also flourishing economically and we see the rise of these commercial centers like Antioch, uh, Jerusalem, Alexandria as well as Constantinople which became important centers for the spread of Christianity right so here then the Western Roman Empire had already been broken down under several kingdoms right and you know there was no political head or political authority that could unite them but the religion could 
which was that religion christianity so it was christianity that unified these kingdoms even after the decline of roman empire right so christian churches were the one that uh, arose and they established their institutions that would promote learning and development and would also protect these empires and unite them together don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon you can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the delta step app to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus master each topic with our adaptive practice technology get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests get all your doubts resolved instantly learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy it is rewarding too so register for free now